Thank you very much. Um, yeah, my name is Mark Wendell. I'm a product manager at Microsoft working on SharePoint Embedded. Uh, this is the, a continuation of a series that we've been doing within SharePoint Embedded, kind of introduce some of the tech and capabilities of this new platform. And today we're going to talk about how you can build real-time collaborative apps with Fluid on SharePoint Embedded. So we'll get started there. Um, now, before we kind of get into the meat of that, I just wanted to give a quick intro to SharePoint Embedded if you haven't come across it yet. Um, SharePoint Embedded is a, is a platform that allows you to build uh, your custom applications on top of and get the capabilities of Microsoft 365 storage. And so really it's a API only service um, that kind of brings the power of SharePoint for your custom applications. With that, you get a dedicated content partition in any tenant you install your application on. And because of that, you get a whole bunch of capabilities within security compliance, content management, AI, and more. Here's a look at um, some of those capabilities across four different areas. So we've looked at this slide before in, the, in some of the previous talks that have been given. It goes across content AI, security, collaboration, and core storage. Today, within the collaboration space, I'm going to show you how you can um, take advantage of the Fluid framework support and build your own kind of custom Fluid applications on top of SharePoint Embedded. Now, starting there, if you haven't come across Fluid yet, um, what it is at a high level, it is a, it is a uh, framework that lets you build simple uh, real-time collaboration into your custom applications. It is open source, so there's an open source client, uh, client-side TypeScript library that you can use in your custom app. Um, and you can, and that, what that lets you do is have multiple simultaneous clients all interacting on the same document and using the same state. To do that as well, there's a relay service that is built into SharePoint Embedded, and that coordinates the clients and persists the data. Um, it is as simple as writing to what appears to be a local object, and that automatically gets synchronized across all of your simultaneous clients, and that data gets saved uh, also into SharePoint Embedded um, when you use it with SharePoint Embedded. So it's really cool technology. And it actually is powering a whole bunch of first-party applications that we have at Microsoft, including Microsoft Loop, Power Platform, Whiteboard, and, and many more. Um, in terms of SharePoint Embedded and Fluid working together, if you want to learn a little bit more um, about that or what I'm showing you today, you can go to ak.ms slash SPE dash fluid. All right. Now, I'll just this is really just a primer on what you can do when you build a Fluid app on top of SharePoint Embedded. We already have that today. Microsoft Loop is a Fluid-based application built on top of SharePoint Embedded. So it's already live. And if you've come across it, it's a pretty cool application. Um, in terms of like information architecture, the way to think about it is that when you create a Loop workspace, so here in this picture on the left-hand side, we're looking at the kind of auto-generated getting started workspace that Loop stamps out for you, that is actually a container within SharePoint Embedded. And then when you create a page within there, so we've got a few pages here like welcome, check the basics and so on. Um, each page is actually a fluid file within there. And then the constructs for permission management within SharePoint Embedded that I've covered in one of the previous talks here, um, those are actually using kind of the loop is loop, loop is taking advantage of some of those contracts as well. So when you're looking at the, the permissions on a workspace, that is really taking advantage of the container permissioning roles that are built into SharePoint Embedded. And then when you're giving individual permissions to pages within Loop, um, again, those are using file level additive permissions that you can take advantage of with SharePoint Embedded. So pretty cool. It's mature technology. Um, it can handle any kind of scale you want to throw at it. Um, now we've had it with this first party loop application. You are able to now go build your own custom fluid apps on top of SharePoint Embedded today. Um, so I'm super excited to be able to share that. Let's let's get right into some demos. Um, if you want to learn more, like I said, go to ak.ms slash SPE dash fluid. And there's a few other links in there that uh, that I've got that of, of some of the stuff that I'm going to show. But I'm going to click on actually that SPE dash fluid link and just show you um, this new article that is published. It's actually just published yesterday. Uh, gives you a little bit of background on what this is, kind of some of the stuff that I just talked about. And then it goes into a quick start. And so that's what I want to show you today is just how you can get started, build uh, a sample application and get that running on your local machine 
so you can have fluid working on top of SharePoint Embedded and how that works and what it looks like. Um, so the quick start is going to take you through some steps. I'm not going to go line by line on this, but the short story here is you go to the sample apps directory, clone the sample apps, um, like git clone. Um, and I did that in Visual Studio Code already, and I'll, and I'll go to that. And then you kind of follow the instructions here. And so I'm going to go into uh, Visual Studio Code and looks like I, there we go. All right, so I've opened up Visual Studio Code um, on my local machine. And uh, in order to kind of get started with Fluid Framework on SharePoint Embedded or just SharePoint Embedded in general, you have to you know, create a container type and set up an application and stuff. We actually have a Visual Studio Code extension that streamlines that and helps you get started uh, creating a free container type. Uh, so it's, it's the, probably the fastest and most easiest way to get started. Download this extension within uh, Visual Studio Code, um, and then and then sign in and get going on it. And then once you've done that, you know you can clone the uh, Fluid Framework sampled samples from GitHub. And and once you do that, uh, I've got that cloned here. This item counter dash SBE is the new sample application that takes advantage of uh, the SharePoint embedded relay service. So I'm going to open that up, and after I've got the kind of getting started instructions and, and set up my container type, all I have to do is create an environment file with a couple of pieces of data in there. I'm not going to open up my actual one, but I'm going to open up the default one just to show you what that looks like. It's really straightforward. The SBE client ID, all I do here is put in my Azure Intra or Azure Active Directory client or application ID in here, and then an SBE container type ID. If that If you don't know what that means, I would recommend you know get that Visual Studio Code extension, read some of the SharePoint Embedded documentation, or check out some of my prior talks, and you'll understand what that is. Uh, once you have those two things in your app, uh, then you can run npm install. I've already done that, um, so that's just going to install the local libraries on here. And um, now I'm just going to run npm run start, and that is going to run my local um, development server for this particular application. All that really does is serve, you know, a, like uh, a page that does a bunch of JavaScript and has that Fluid Framework library. So here I'm going to grab the URL. It's just running on localhost 8080. Open up a new browser window and visit that link. And it might take a second for that app to get up and running. There it goes. Looks like the app's running. OK. So once this loads, it's going to open up the Fluid demo. And actually, under the hood, um, all it's done is it, it created and it used the Fluid framework to create a new file, a new Fluid file within my SharePoint embedded storage container. And you can see that updated kind of the slug of the URL here. So there's um, this reference is the particular Fluid file that I'm working on. And here, the, the data model, like I mentioned, when you use the Fluid Framework and on top of SharePoint Embedded, what you really get is this uh, an abstraction that lets you interact with your own object model that gets automatically distributed to, uh, to many simultaneous clients and saved to the service. So in the data model that we're looking at here, all I have is a distributed array. It's very simple. So I can insert items to that array and remove items from that array. Really simple. But the cool thing is, that I can grab this link, I'll copy it, and I can open up a new browser window. This time I'm going to open up in a different browser profile, signed in as a different user, and I'll paste that and sign in here. On the original one, I'm signed in as admin. I'm going to sign in as Megan Bowen on this one. And then, yes, we'll stay signed in once that loads. You should see that it'll pick up that same fluid file, and now we're interacting with that exact same distributed state. So both of these clients are interacting with this distributed state as though it's a local object, but the fluid framework automatically handles all of that synchronization, both to all of the other clients that may be connected to this particular session, as well as saving that state into a file, a fluid file, within a SharePoint embedded storage container. The setup of this is really simple. If I go back over to Visual Studio Code, we can take a look at uh, the source code here. It's really um, pretty straightforward. You can check it out for yourself. I'm not going to cover it all line for line. 
But when I click on one of those insert or remove buttons, this is really it. It is a string array that extends from uh, the schema factory that's built into the Fluid Framework libraries. And I'm just really interacting with a, like a, an array in here to add or remove elements. That's it. All of the synchronization and stuff is just taken care of for me. So that's a quick tour of how you can take advantage of Fluid Framework to build your custom collaboration apps on top of SharePoint Embedded and all of the collaboration, synchronization, and storage is taken care of for you, as well as all the other benefits that you get by building your custom applications on SharePoint Embedded. So that's it for me. Thanks for the time today, and I'll uh, look at the chat if there's any questions in there.